guys welcome to my channel today's gonna be a bit of a rant slash thought video we're gonna start with Zara Holland Zara Zara this woman is in some deep poo poo I don't know what's happening to the world Okay, so this woman's a delight of a UK slash reality TV star, former beauty queen, whatever. I've never heard of her before now. She's on Love Island, which I've also never watched. I've heard amazing things though. She's facing charges for breaking quarantine when entering Barbados. I'm just gonna read this article and then we'll talk about it. Love Island star Zara Holland will appear in court in Barbados on Wednesday, charged with breaching COVID-19. I accidentally cut off that screenshot there, but basically she breached the COVID-19 quarantine protocols. The former Miss Great Britain, 25, could be faced up to 18,000 pounds and jailed for a year. She and boyfriend Elliot Love, 30, were arrested by police at the airport as they tried to flee after he tested positive. It has now emerged, oh, and it has now emerged the island has had a surge of 200 new cases of the virus in the past two days with 33 linked to the airport from which the couple tried to leave. I mean, there's only one airport on the island, I think, but anyways, by the way, this article is from uh, Barbados today. She will be in court a week after a fellow tourist was jailed for six months for a similar breach. Last night, Love remained at the island's quarantine center. More than 800 people, mainly islanders, have signed a petition demanding the pair be thrown in jail. It's on change.org if you want to sign it. I Zara, Zara, whatever her name is, from North Farabee, East Yorkshire, has been visiting the Caribbean island for many years and was yesterday confined to her hotel room. She told newspaper Barbados today, I would never do anything to jeopardize an entire nation that I have nothing but love and respect for. Except you did. And also you clearly don't have love and respect for them. So I'm so fired up about this. Like this just makes me absolutely irate. Uh, so then I've, I've read a few articles about it. And of course this is all alleged, but um, she tried to, they tried to board an airplane going back to the UK after her boyfriend, that Elliot Love guy, tested positive for COVID-19. So I guess, despite the fact that I would assume they knew damn well they would have to quarantine when they got here if they did test positive, like I knew that. And I don't have assistants or managers or anything telling me these things. Like you just do your research and you understand that if you're choosing to travel during this time, there are certain standards and regulations and procedures that may happen, especially if you do test positive. Like, anyways. So initially they were in a quarantine facility, I believe after his test came back positive, but then they were taken to a hotel where they were to quarantine for two weeks. And then they were arrested at the airport because apparently the hotel staff found their cut off wristband. So I guess if you test positive, you get a red wristband or if you have to quarantine or whatever, you get this red wristband, excuse me, indicating that you're not supposed to be cutting it off and leaving the hotel, which they apparently did. So the hotel staff found these cut off wristbands and they were arrested at the airport. I mean, understandably, like I'm just here on the welcome stampies. I'm not a Bajan. Prime Minister did say that I'm a Bajan by choice though. So I'll wear that badge with pride because I love this country. But yeah, like I'm not, I'm not even a citizen here. And I'm just, I feel so mad because the amazing Barbadian people have allowed for people to come into their country when a lot of places are not doing that right now. They're even letting people from the UK in despite a lot of people pushing back saying that travel from the UK should be banned to Barbados. They still haven't banned travel from UK to Barbados. And the Prime Minister has said there are people in the UK who may need to return home. There are people here who may need to term ho return home. I am not closing the borders. So just all these things considered, I think it's just despicable what they did. And in another news article, she was quoted as saying this was a, a misunderstanding and something else. But I think what it just sounds like is that she is a spoiled brat who didn't want to stay in quarantine for two weeks and tried to flee the country. Like it's just embarrassing. Anyways, people are entitled. They tried to take advantage of a country who has been nothing but welcoming, generous, full of kind people, full of lovely people who trust us to enter their country. I remember there was one day we were taking a cab somewhere and we were talking to the driver and he was like asking us what we were doing here, how long we were here for, and we told him we were on the welcome stamp visa. And he said something like, well, thank you so much for trusting us for, to come here. Like, thank you for trusting our country and choosing to come here. And we said, <clears throat> actually, I don't even think I said this out loud, but I thought it in my brain and I should have said it out loud. Like, thank you for allowing us to come into your country and be here. Like, it was no, I'm sure, easy decision for the people here and whatever else. Like, it obviously does carry a risk. And it's people like this who take advantage and ruin it for people who want to follow procedures correctly. Unreal. Unreal. 
real. So now that that rant is over, I also just want to like say as a side note, I'm no saint. I know we're not supposed to throw rocks in glass houses or whatever that saying is like I'm not a perfect human I just want that out there but I certainly try to come here and respect the country's laws and customs and traditions and again we're in like a kind of almost lockdown so I'm going to do my very best to respect all of the rules and regulations and I think so far I've done a damn good job I haven't left the house since New Year's Eve anyways just saying I'm no saint but that's just not okay gross I hate people Anyways, I do hope they do get some jail time because I guess some another tourist had got uh, six months of jail time, maybe a Jamaican, I think it was, six months of jail time because he breached the quarantine protocols as well. So then now that that rant's done, I am going to just share a little bit about what this kind of curfew lockdown looks like. Sorry if you can hear the background noise, I think Sean's on a work meeting, so you might catch a little bit of his lovely voice. Okay, so we have a curfew. It's now 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. You can only exercise at the beach, walk or swim, so you can't be loitering there. You can't be having drinks. Lots of bars and restaurants have closed down voluntarily. There was no order saying that they have to close down. There was simply this curfew put out, and I would assume like some limits on how many people could enter, but it seems like a lot of places have just shut down on their own. Otherwise, if shops are open, they're just operating at limited hours of operation, like such as supermarkets and like churches and that kind of thing. Although I think there's a couple exceptions to some church rules, but no social gatherings of any kind and you are just kind of encouraged to stay home in general while they trace the spread. Apparently part of this like huge outbreak was a bus pub crawl called Brandy and Punani. At first I kind of thought people were joking about it but then I heard that it was actually said on a press conference by like the governor general or something. That's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> Anyways, I was watching um, the update last night on Barbados today, and it sounds like things are getting under control. Like, they had quite a few different speakers, some medical people, and the Prime Minister, and this and that. And it sounds like they are getting it under control. So I think that's a very, very hopeful look in the future that things could maybe go back to the normal that I'm used to here by the 11th. But they're going to kind of reevaluate the situation. But it does sound like the tracing has been, it's been going well. So that's that. It's very interesting seeing how things are dealt with in a small area. So like I'm from Alberta, Canada. The two capital cities there have a million people each, a million plus people each. So we're dealing with a huge population. And so I think it's easy easy to kind of lose sight of how this can be spread because I just remember like you know we hear they don't want to overwhelm the ICUs at home this is why we're like often in a lockdown kind of situation and I think it just gets lost upon us how it spreads so quickly and easily because when we heard of this spread here because since we've been here there's been anywhere from like one to nine active cases on the island so it's been quite minimal as far as I'm aware and then for on New Year's Eve like we literally went to bed New Year's Eve I went to bed at like 10 30 because I can rarely stay up super late New Year's Eve we went to bed woke up the next day and suddenly there was the curfew this and that like they acted so quickly and people just willingly did it. They didn't have to, as far as I know, the beaches are still like, you can still exercise, whatever, because people just respect like, okay, we need to slow the spread, lay low for a couple weeks. You need to stop partying for a couple weeks. And hopefully once this is under control, then business as usual. And by as usual, I know this is still very subdued compared to normal Barbadian standards. I just have a lot of respect for the Barbadian people and the government because I think that they seem to be handling this really well. And I know there's really no right way to do this. No one wrote a textbook on how to deal with a pandemic. So who the hell knows? And half the people don't even think the pandemic's real. I don't know what to think. But all I know is we're going to lay low for the next couple of weeks and really just try to do what we can to help control the spread. And feeling very, very grateful that I can be locked down at this gorgeous country cottage with a private pool. And I'm thankful for my health and my safety. And to be here in Barbados and not in the Canadian winter. Mind you, it sounds like Canada, you're having a gorgeous winter. Of course you have a gorgeous winter the year I'm gone. I've been gone for three Canadian winters, so I don't know what I'm complaining about. Anyways, guys, this was just a little, another rant one. I'm sure if you've gotten to this point, first of all, thank you. I'm sure you're one of very few. If you haven't, then I'm just yelling into the void, but it's nice. Got a lot off my chest today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you are interested in travel info and most importantly, travel outings, which we will be back to in a couple weeks once the lockdown is done. See you next time.